So now that we know how view templates work, and we've seen how they are applied on plan views, let's talk about how we can use Revit for setting up elevations. And since we've landed on this beautiful enlarged floor plan for kitchen, let's jump on setting up views for internal elevations. The Revit tool we are going to be using for this is called Elevation and can be found in View, Elevation, which basically opens up the Modify ribbon part and gives us an option of defining elevations in plan views. You can see Revit even guesses the orientation of elevation icon while I'm moving my cursor. There's also an option to attach the elevation icon to grid. So I'll just delete this icon. and make a new one and click on attach to grid and you will see that it snaps to the closest grid line. And finally the method for generating elevations you're going to be using most of the time is probably this one. Pointing on the plan, clicking on it selecting the elevation icon, deciding on which elevations you want to show by clicking on these little boxes, in our case it's going to be all four sides of this kitchen, and at the end checking how these elevations look in their respective views. Let's get back to enlarged floor plan kitchen. Now we can probably already see the difference between this icon and the one I decided to define previously. The only difference is this one has been assigned to a sheet named A19 and each view on those sheets corresponds to one of these elevations and elevation icon arrows. So let's delete these redundant elevation icons by hitting delete. And check out how the A19 sheet looks like, including all these elevations. Let's go to the A19 sheet. Check out the numbers. Sheet numbers look right. Kitchen elevation south. Kitchen elevation west, east, and finally north. Everything looks right here, but what if we want to focus on a certain zone of this elevation? For example, to neglect this part or just hide part of the elevation. Well, it turns out we have to go back to the floor plan and set up elevation extends with these little handles. You can clearly see where the extends and if you go back Click on the little arrow and change the depth of the elevation. You can even end up without showing anything. Like this. Oh, I actually caught all these light fixtures. And this of course reflects the final image on sheet 819. Let's get back to it. And here we are. Elevation number three, kitchen elevation, with our free light fixtures visible on the sheet.
As you can probably guess, a very similar concept is used for making external elevations, but let's check that out as well. Let me go to ground floor. And let's try and set up an exterior elevation. We go to view, elevation, set up our extent, extents seem to be right, and finally click on the elevation icon to check how the elevation looks like. Now we can finally see how elevation views without applied view templates look like, and this is a very good example. Almost nothing is right. The view depth, the extents, let's say the extents are too big, we can adjust them here, and of course the raw graphic data leaves a lot to wish for. Let's quickly adjust the view extents and view depth. Let's check out the difference between this elevation and the one with the proper view template applied. Yes, you can tell the difference. Also, you can tell that all these parameters are frozen because the view template is applied. Here's the name, custom elevation. Of course, we can fine tune everything within the view properties dialog, like for example, the way how walls are displayed. I'm adding some patterns here. And we have the final version of our elevation setup. 